So you want to lose fat and ideally keep it off. One thing you're going to come to know is that it's not just about losing the fat, it's about knowing how to keep the fat off so it doesn't return. So in today's video, what we're going to do is go over 10 of the smartest things that you can do so many, many people make this mistake, especially people that first get into exercising. And it is that they start weight training with the ideal of just losing fat. And they consistently during their workouts, trying to monitor how much calories they're burning during it. And that is not a smart approach, especially as smartwatches are notorious for incorrectly tracking weight training exercises because it's just very hard to monitor. There's many factors that can make the number skew. So definitely don't focus on that. So my main point is, is that when you're weight training, you should not be rigidly or obsessively looking at your smartwatch. When you're lifting weights, think that you're building muscle. And when you're doing cardio, then you can like track on the machine how much calories you're burning and if your times are improving. That is a much better method. Next up, I had a friend that was consistently trying to lose weight, but she was following a certain fitness YouTuber. And the biggest thing they used to always promote was intuitive eating. And intuitive eating is great for some, but terrible for many. And the reason why I say this is because on the surface, it sounds perfectly fine. Like even I somewhat practice intuitive eating. However, the issue comes into play when you give this advice to someone that's like really overweight or someone that knows nothing about calories, protein, anything in that regard, because it's like giving a kid money for the first time and taking him to a toy store and saying, have at it. Well, that's not gonna work. As they have no real concept of when to actually stop because they're just giving into their feeling and happiness and the dopamine rush from a game what they want. So it's one of those things where intuitive eating is nice in principle, but I would definitely say if you're someone that's been struggling to lose weight potentially for years, I would avoid intuitive eating. The next one now I think is very important, especially going forward, 2024 going onwards. And that is simply audit who you follow online for fitness advice, especially if you're someone that's easily persuaded to do things. If you follow someone that's in really great shape and they're on steroids, but they look great in their aesthetics and they're doing all these workouts and they look good, there's only so long before you may get the itch and start feeling those little bits of temptations. And the same goes for women if they follow someone that's had like a whole body dome with like a BBL. If you look at them as they're the goal. And then these little outside influences can, little by little, the more you watch them, if it's most of your Instagram page, it can lead you to make some dumb decisions. How old are you? 16. Being out of your top, bro. You're looking jacked. Not out of it. It's not something that should be promoted. So even people, if they come off nice, like I think someone called Sam Sullock is a very, I think the biggest fitness influencer, I think this year. But he is someone I would say far from healthy. So I definitely believe you should um, just try and find more relatable, regular people that you can actually be inspired by, but by their work ethic. For example, me personally, someone like Joe Delaney, very down to earth guy, is someone that I look at and I think, you know what, that is very good. The work he puts in, it kind of motivates me to maybe push myself a little bit further. This tip now is near and dear to my heart and I guarantee I feel like a lot of people have done this, but we'll see. So I am fairly sure, I would almost bet, I would bet my beautiful new shaker bottle on it that, um, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a sponsor, I don't know why I picked that up. But yeah, I'm willing to bet that at some point you've went to the store, you've bought some multi-packs of snacks and treats that you like to put in the cupboard and you're going to have them over the course of the week and you just do that cycle over and over again. But I'm also willing to bet that many times that those snacks do not make it to the end of the week because temptation kicks in every so often and you go get one and you go get a second one and you go get a third one and it's simply because you could not resist the urge to go in the cupboard and only take one. This was me for years, and I mean years. It got to the point where I realized, you know what? My willpower is not strong enough to keep these certain foods in my cupboard. As soon as I realized that and I accepted me for who I am, that I'm, I'm someone that's gonna probably binge, I really saw progress because I stopped buying the multi-packs and if I really had a big craving for whatever item it is, I would go to the store and buy a single one and that would satisfy the craving and I'd move on. Relying on your willpower is a, is a silly strategy. It's much better to set up a system in place where your willpower doesn't even need to come into play because it not being here means I don't have to try and enforce willpower every time I walk into my kitchen. Next up now, if you visit certain countries such as Japan, Italy, or even Spain, you may notice that a lot of people aren't that overweight. And one thing I definitely noticed when I traveled to Spain, a lot of the people I saw, even into older age, were walking a lot, they were on bicycles. I remember seeing a few old ladies, like in separate instances, just riding bikes. So that's one thing that definitely helps people keep the weight down, which is activity, because You'd be surprised how much walking can help you keep your weight down. So you want to stay active. Ideally, the, the measurement they try and say is reach 10,000 steps per day. But if you're someone that's like a super office worker, you may have to start more gradual and go for like, oh no, six to seven K steps and then take it from there. This next tip now, I think from everything on the list is probably the easiest one. I feel like most people could 
actually start from literally today. However, it's the one that most will overlook and the one that I think that most will continually fail at, even though it has such a big impact. And I'll give you an example. I guarantee at some point you've had days when you just feel so out of it and you just can't focus, you feel lethargic, and you basically are performing worse at every task you're doing that day. And I can also give a better guess and say that on those days that that's happened to you, you probably had poor amount of sleep for the days before. And I guarantee, as I said that, I bet some of you just went, BORING! You know that I get more sleep, but I bet you still don't. But realistically, if you're struggling to lose weight and you haven't even got some of the basic fundamentals of getting in at least seven hours of sleep per night, you can't really be moaning that much because it's one of the fundamentals that transfers over to everything. So therefore, I definitely recommend getting extra sleep. It sounds boring, it sounds cliche, but it does truly, truly work. The times when I've had the best sleep in my life is typically when I have looked the best. And this next tip now, personally, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. And the simple thing is, you should ideally aim to learn as much as you can about the foods that you eat. I'm not gonna say you have to learn everything in regards to calories and macros of every food on the world, but at least of the regular foods you eat, because most humans, all of us, we tend to have like maybe the same 10 maybe meals that we kind of cycle through. Those main meals that you consistently have, Ideally, look how much calories they are, look at the portions, look at the protein in them, the fats and all that stuff. So you have a rough idea of the foods that you consume. Because if you don't know that, that's another one of the fundamentals. If you're on a fat loss journey, you have no idea how much protein or how much calories you take daily. You are fighting a super uphill battle. I would almost say that you're not even in the battle yet. You are literally just at the bottom of the stairs, looking up and moaning that you're not at the top without even aiming to take a single step. So I definitely recommend that you learn about the foods that you eat. Just track every so often, just so you know the portion. And whether you can make smart swaps, for example, if you love having cheese, why have the full fat cheese where you can have the 50% off and drop the calories dramatically while still having a similar portion? It's all about making these smart choices, but you don't know this until you actually track the odd food or able to read the nutrition label on certain foods and go, you know what, that's decent calories for the amount of portion you get. Or if you're someone that looks at a cereal box and when it's telling you for like 30 grams, it's like 300 calories, you're like, oh, that's great. When in reality, that's terrible. So I definitely think the more knowledge you have, the better off you're gonna be. Number eight, this one specifically is probably more so for my drivers out there or the uh, passenger princesses, AKA your girlfriend that just sits in the passenger seat. I know we all feel super accomplished when we go to a store and we find that closed car park right by the door. We just feel like we've almost won a medal. However, I would personally recommend parking as far away as you can before it being, you know, ridiculous. And that's simply because it's another chance for you to actually walk more, actually move. If you're someone that always drives everywhere, you're probably not doing that many steps daily. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very important. Plus, oftentimes when you're trying to search for that close car park right by the store door, you often waste like three or four minutes anyway trying to find that spot going around. Where it's much easier if you just park a little bit further away where there's usually a lot more spaces. And then you just get out the car park and that time is roughly the same anyway. So you may even save you time, who knows? but I definitely recommend um, these little tips and tricks. It's also very similar to the trick I tell um, office workers, which is always go to the furthest bathroom when you need to pee. And it's simply because you'll add up. Like, you know what I mean? Peeing is something you gotta do. Nature's gonna make you do it. Those simple things over the course of a day and weeks and months, those little movements really do make a change. Number nine now is gonna sound cliche, but I definitely do stand by it. But it is, have you ever heard the phrase, if you work a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Even though that phrase, as I said, is super cheesy, it does somewhat apply to fitness and exercise and overall living a healthy lifestyle. Because if you're doing something, whether it's eating foods that you hate or doing a workout or sport that you hate, you're not going to stick to it long term. You won't be doing it a year from now. You won't be doing it six months from now. You may not even be doing it a month from now. But if you find foods that you enjoy that are still healthy to get you towards your goal and doing a sport or something that you enjoy, you are far more likely to stick with it long term because it doesn't feel like you have to break your back to actually go and do the thing. And even if it gets to the point where you're someone that just doesn't like most activities, you need to find the one that you enjoy the most or hate the least is probably the best way of putting it. And that is the best way you're probably going to find you're going to stick to anything long term. And finally, numero, I was going to say numero uno, but maybe it is if we're going downwards from 10 downwards. This is by far the biggest game changer that helped me lose weight and it came about from me having a casual conversation with one of my friends after the gym so basically the conversation went he was telling me he bumped into some fairly large fitness influencer that competes in bodybuilding and the fitness influencer was telling him like his tips and tricks of how he stays lean most of the year so when it's time for him to compete he only has to like up the gear a little bit and he basically said to my friend that 
the biggest thing for him that helped him was buying an exercise bike for his house because having that cardio equipment in his house allowed him to eliminate the excuses of not wanting to do cardio after doing a long weight session or having to go to the gym specifically for his cardio days because when you wake up and the machine's there, it's just much easier for him to say, you know what, every morning when I wake up, I'm gonna do my 20 or my 30 or my 40 minutes right there and then. And as my friend is telling me this, my brain is like blowing up because I'm like, I can relate to it so much. Even though I don't compete, on my fat loss journeys, there's many times when I just didn't feel like doing the cardio at the gym. So literally after this conversation ended, I went straight home and started researching what cardio piece of equipment I could afford and also which ones I would actually stick to. And I say stick to because in the past, I did borrow an exercise bike from my parents and I had it for like three, four months and I probably only used it twice. And I realized, okay, so me buying an exercise bike is not gonna work. So I thought, what machine would I like in my house I'm probably gonna use? So I ended up opting for an incline treadmill. And I'm gonna say, it's just been such a great purchase for me. It eliminates me moaning about the weather. It allows me not to use the excuse of, oh, I can't go for a walk today because it's raining crazy outside. I can just go on my treadmill. Plus with my treadmill now at home, I also have a weighted vest that I often use as well to make it even more intense. So there's various benefits to having a piece of cardio equipment in your house. But obviously for everyone, this is not going to be a simple thing because there's a matter of cost or even the space in your house. But I will say many of my clients are overweight that did happen to end up purchasing some sort of cardio equipment, whether it's an exercise bike, a treadmill, or even a roll machine one person bought, they saw big benefits because they realized that their biggest issue was not being active enough and having it in the house and then saying every morning before work, I'm just gonna do 20 minutes, really goes a long way. So if possible, if you're serious about fat loss and you're maybe someone that's been struggling for years, I would recommend trying to get some sort of cardio equipment. An incline treadmill is great, but if you can't get one of those, there's those ones on Amazon that people put under their desk and you can pull them out. Even that goes a long way as well. But if you're someone that's watching that's still worrying or wants to learn about how to lose weight correctly and safely, feel free to check out this video here where I deep dive into how to actually track your calories and how to successfully start losing the weight in a more sustainable way.